So, try to continue this conversation a little bit more. Um, um, anyway, so, it's not always easy being single. Um, there are lots of things that men and women both need um, in their lives, and that contact is, is important. You know, having that contact with someone, having that con those conversations, having that, that affection, you know, that friendship, doing things together. You know, those are things you start missing after a while, you know, and you can, you know, you hang out with your friends, this kind of stuff, that's fine. I just, I just don't want to be that guy who, um, you know, I'm 52, I don't want to be that guy who just doesn't have a relationship with a woman, you know, I want to have a relationship with a woman, I'm not looking for all of them, I'm just looking for one, you know, although I'm not looking very hard, and it's, it's difficult with COVID, I mean, you do these, these dating apps, and they're all a bunch of crap, I mean, you... I've never seen so much crap in my entire life. Either they don't believe you, because there's so many assholes out there who are uh, who are just out scamming or catfishing or whatever. Or you see these women on there who the same age as you, but they look 20 years older, and I'm sh and I know there are men like that also. Uh, or you you see women out there who. <laughs> It's just so, you know, the moment I see environmentalism, I, I just go past that. <laughs> I don't want to be involved with anybody who's an environmentalist. Because, you know, I believe in the environment, and I believe in protecting the environment. But I sure as hell don't need to join some club to do it, and I sure as hell don't need to walk around with a sign. I just do my bit. You know, I do my part. You know, you lead by example. You don't lead by walking around with a piece of paper that you had to go out and buy or steal or whatever and put ink on it. And then after what you're going to do, you're going to throw it in the garbage. So, <laughs> so I, I don't, you know, that's just not my thing, but, or you find them, they're all, you know, they, they have all these little things on there, like, uh, you know, these little emojis that say, you know, they like the vacation, they like sushi, they like hotels, they like all this kind of stuff, you know, well do all that stuff. You don't need a man to do that with you, you know? You know, I like vacation just like anybody else does, but I mean, I'm also someone who who um, likes to go camping, you know, get in the outdoors, you know, uh, see that kind of stuff. Also like being at home, you know, I like being at home. I like, uh, you know, watch a little bit of television, listen to some music, relaxing, you know. And when you see these these 40, 50 year old women who are like, they got in their, their new breath, they look great, they're beautiful women, huh? there's no doubt about that, but they're like, I mean, they're super crossfitters and 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 on their bicycles all the time, and they gotta swim. They got they occupy themselves with so much stuff, and and that's fine. You know, do what makes you happy. You know, but it's you know the problem is that they don't. They, you know, the guys who do that are out for one thing, and the guys who don't do it are more guys who are homebodies, or guys who are just. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I did all the high speed, low drag stuff in my life. You know, I jumped out of airplanes and I did all that stuff. And, um, I don't need to do that anymore. You know, I don't need to go tandem parachute, you know, I could do it, you know, but it, it doesn't interest me anymore. It's like scuba diving, even, you know, it just doesn't interest me as much as it used to. I mean, it's just, it's not that interesting, you know, by the way, I have a cat over here who's about to fall. <laughs> Look at this right here. I'm going to show you this real quick. This is his goober. There you go. He jumped off. Oh, I guess he's such a, a knucklehead Cooper is. Anyway, um, but anyway, these relationships are hard. You know, they're not easy, and I don't want a hard relationship. I want something easy, you know? And I think anybody who wants something hard, um, if you have to work, if it's work all the time, I mean, who in the hell is this woman? I mean, I don't want to have to work all the time for some woman. I want to... I want to work for, you know, of course, you know, do things for us, do things that a couple needs to do, but, you know, to, and, and, but you don't have to, you know, it's not like some, like the Germans, you know, who every Saturday morning get up and, and sweep the sidewalk, you know, it's like, sometimes you want to sleep in a little bit. I mean, I dated a girl who six o'clock every morning, man, she was up and at it, boy. And then she didn't get to bed until, uh, nine thirty, ten o'clock at night, you know, and she was just already pooped and worn out and, you know. That's, there's no conversation. There's just nothing there. You know, it's just, it's just all about go, go, go. And, and, you know, uh, to me, it's, it's, you got to take a breath. Sometimes you got to take a day off. You got to enjoy life. And, and that's always a problem with dating. Uh, if you date a woman who's got a child because they don't have time for you. And if they did have, and if they make time for you, they're, they're probably not making time for their children. 
You know, what kind of person is that? And it'd be the same thing with a man. You know, if you're dating a man who's who's got kids at home, he needs to concentrate on those kids. And um, uh, luckily, I'm in a situation where mine are, you know, grown and, and doing their thing. Um, but they're still, they're my priority. So if they <laughs> they call me, I speak to them. I talk to them, you know. I, I drop whatever I'm doing if I can, and, and, and they're my priority because I want to know what's going on in their lives because their lives are part of my life, you know. But like going back to making yourself happy, you have to to learn to make yourself happy. You can't expect someone else to make you happy if you're not gonna if you can't make yourself happy. It's like with love, you can't expect someone to love you if you can't love yourself. You know, you got to find it. You know, we're not perfect. We're not. Uh, you know, we, we we're all individuals here. You know, and we have to to, to learn to 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 be be ourselves. You know, and and um, that's the problem. I mean, you meet somebody. You know, and that's I think something I ran into in the last relationship I was in. Beautiful, beautiful woman. I mean, really just beautiful. Um, I'm not going to say she was out of my league. I probably said that I was out of her league uh, because she was just too, um, she had too much going on. She had a child, you know, and, 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 um, but, you know, she, she wasn't honest with herself or honest with me, I don't think, you know, and, and it, it just didn't work out, you know, I mean, and it didn't work out for petty reasons, not for anything that you would ever actually consider to be a real reason, you know? I mean, the excuse that she gave me was like, all right, and I was already like, you know what, this is, I, you know what, when you have to, when you wait for an hour in the parking lot for someone to come out of their house to go out on a date with them, that's too much. So there you go. <laughs> I didn't want to have to work. You know, I wanted to be easy, you know. It should be easy. No stress, no no pushing, no no pulling. Just Just go with it, you know. Do whatever, you know. Be spontaneous. You know, I like to plan things out, but at the same time, I don't like to plan things out. I mean, I like to just, you know, go and show up and see what's what's happening, you know. The weather might be different, you know. So be flexible. Be open for suggestions. And so relationships are very, very special, very difficult uh, for many people. And they're difficult because I think, I mean, people tell me, friends of mine tell me, oh, you're just too, speci you're too um, picky. You know what? I'm not too picky. As, well, I mean, sure, I don't want, I mean, look. I don't want a woman who's who's out of shape. I want a woman who's going to be able to keep up with me, and I, and I need to keep up with her, you know, into whatever we're doing, you know. I mean, uh, so I'm, but she doesn't have to be super thin either. I like a little, I like a curvy woman, you know. I like, you know, I I, I got through all that uh, that high school stuff where she had to be, you know, this, that, and the other. Now, I mean, I really want someone who's nice and has those curves. Yeah, you want to be able to enjoy yourself with that, you know. But um, of course, not not obese, you know. I'm not obese, you know. I, I'm a big guy. Uh, but I'm not obese, okay, and um, um, and I've actually I'm actually losing weight, you know. But yeah, uh, you want someone who who accepts you for who you are. I mean, you date some chick and she says, "Oh, you know what? You could lose a couple of pounds." You know, yeah, you could win a lotto too. I mean, hell, is this why? What's up with this? Why is this all? What? What? Why are you even saying that? You know, of course I can lose a couple of pounds, just like you could lose a couple of pounds or gain a couple of pounds or or get fitter or get toner or or or, or get younger. It's just, it's just not necessarily going to happen. And is it the most important thing in the world? Now, instead of saying that, say, hey, how about we, you know, you do, you plan active things and you do active things together, you know, or you plan meals a little better, you know. Um, I'm, you know, I've lost about uh, eight, seven, seven, eight kilos in the past uh, four months. Stress, a lot of stress, you know, um, just daily stress, life stress, you know. But, um, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it's people make a big deal out of a whole lot, you know, and it's, it's just not necessary, you know. If you don't like my beard, okay, tell me you don't like my beard. I'll trim it. It's, it's not a problem for me. You know, it's not a problem for me. But at the same time, you know, um, don't expect me to. <laughs> what do you bring into the table? I mean, it's got to be a little bit of negotiation too, but it shouldn't be that difficult, you know. Like I said, it shouldn't be work. It should be very easy going, you know, and, um, you got to, you know, people don't give anyone the chance either, you know, um, and what's sad and what's, what's really cruel is that nowadays we're, we're forced to go through because of this COVID and, and just this whole internet experience, we're forced to go through all these, these, these pictures of people, you know, which does it just says an outside thing, you know, um, and we've lost that 
that going to a place, to church, or to a fair, or to a public gathering, or whatever, a bar, and meeting somebody, you know, I'm not a bar person, you know, I don't drink, I drink a little bit, but not that much, uh, I'm not a, um, I don't go to discotheques to dance, I'm 52 years old, I'm never going to go on no damn dance floor, and try to impress some chick, it's just, that's just not going to happen, you know, I don't, I'm not John Travolta, I don't have those kind of moves, you know, anymore, especially anymore, you know, um, but uh, it's just sort of, you know, <laughs> It's just, it's just tough nowadays to meeting people, you know. I mean, uh, um, I went on this, this this night one time, and I met a nice lady. I mean, a really nice lady. Now, of course, it didn't work out, not because of me, but because of her. I mean, she just had so many. I mean, in the end, I had to break it off with because this was a woman. It was very, very nice, very lovely lady. Um, it was a, actually a night where you go to your, you go to a restaurant with like twenty people. You pay a, a fee to get in, and you all sit together and eat together, and you get to talk and mingle, you know. And there's like there's like the primary meal, then the dessert, you know, and then you have, you know, before that you drink a little bit to get to see everybody, that kind of stuff. And she was a perfectly nice lady, you know, um, um, lovely lady, you know, but, um, um, it just, it actually, I, I would out with her again last, we had, we had, we had lunch together right before COVID kicked in, I think, or something like that last year. And we went out together just for, just for have lunch. And I realized that, I, th I think she needed a confirmation that that we weren't going to get back together or something. I don't know what it was. We had we had like a coffee together, um, and then afterwards we we went on our merry way. But um, she she sadly she um, she was still very much in in love in her brain or in her heart with her first husband. You know, with her husband who she'd been divorced with for like fifteen sixteen years, and it just wasn't finished. And this guy's already been married three or four times after that. You know, which was really sad for her because, like I said, she's a lovely lady. And uh, this guy, he was just an idiot, you know, to let her go. You know, now, um, I think a lot of people make a lot of mistakes, you know, and they and they, they live to regret it, you know. Um, I'm not saying my ex-wife made a mistake, but, you know, look, um, I've grown a lot since then, and I've learned a lot about myself since then. Things I didn't really take time to learn about myself when I was younger, you know. Um, but... Um, yeah, it's important to know these things about yourself. You, you almost shouldn't be allowed to get married until you're 30. You know, you shouldn't even, I mean, people don't even need to get married. They shouldn't shouldn't have to get married to have a life together, you know. Uh, but uh, i tell you what, living together is also another thing, you know. Um, it, you know, when I lived with somebody for 20 years, it it changes your brain. It changes your, how you think. And then when that, that ends, I remember being so lost for a long time. I was like, you know, I was like, what do I do? I mean, I, I'm going to go out, but I don't have anybody to tell. I don't have anybody to say, hey, I'm going out. I'll, I'll see you later, you know. It just, it was a loss. It was a huge hole, you know, I would say. And, of course, I fell into that hole also. I fell really hard in that hole and for a long time. It took me a long time to, to claw my way out of that hole. I mean, for the first three, four years, it was really bad. I mean, it was, um, yeah, it was tough. It was, it was to the point to where I did not want to live anymore. You know, it got to that point. But you know what? I got past it, and then at the five-year point, you know, it was a lot better. It wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better, you know. And then, it took, and then even when I was dating other women, you know, you, you tend to want to compare them, you know, in the beginning, you know. And you meet some, I met some beautiful women, some really beautiful women, but they just, you know, they either, they either, I either, either I wasn't ready, they weren't ready, uh, or they were too pushy, or they had their own little things, or I had my own little things also. I mean, I don't regret going out with any of them, you know. Um, I don't have a huge um, um, experience now after marriage with dating women. I just don't, um, because it's tough meeting women. It's tough meeting people, especially in this country. I'm in Switzerland, and I speak French, and I speak some German. But meeting, um, I mean, I dated one. I went over a couple of times, and she just said, and she spoke perfect English, but she was just angry at the idea that I, but we weren't speaking German together. I'm like, well, why in the hell did you accept to go out with me then? You know, why did you go out with me three times? You know, why, why, why did you, why did you waste your time if you felt like you were wasting your time? You know, uh, but <laughs> it's a psychological side to that, you know. And she's a perfectly nice woman, you know, but she's also one of these that were. That was as uh, she had um, in the fitness. I mean, like a like a like crazy, you know. I mean, she was on her bicycle every day after work, you know. And she even taught some classes, just sort of. And she had a perfectly good job. She didn't have to do all that, but she did it because she wanted to. I respect that. I have I have no problem for that. But you know, it's sort of like you know, the, the, you know, that they, yeah. 
I just don't, I don't understand all that. It's like, you know, I wouldn't give up what I do for somebody. I mean, they're going to have to accept it. I'm going to go camping every once in a while. I want to, you know, even see my friends. That's one thing I, I, I lost with my marriage is that when I left, when we, when I left from that house, um, I lost all my friends, every one of them. They all just abandoned me because they believed, I guess, her, um, uh, her, they believed her story over mine, I guess. And uh, because they they definitely didn't want my story getting out there, you know, that's for sure. But, you know, you know, people, there's no law that says people have to be together. They have to live together. They have to stay together, you know. I mean, imagine that. I mean, if you live in a society where you could not, <laughs> whew, that'd be a completely different ballgame. I mean, and there is a society like that, you know. I mean, uh, um, there's, there are places on this, in this world that, you know. And then there are places where, you know, the character of a couple character of an individual is judged not on the sunny days. Sunny days are sunny days. They're great. You know, everybody's happy. Everybody's having fun. But it's those rainy days when, when tough times happen, you know, when one, t one does something stupid. You know, are you, do you have enough heart, enough soul, enough, um, enough, enough, enough brain, enough brains, enough, uh, enough gray matter to really look at that and think, you know what? Let's find out the whole story here. Let's find out what's going on, you know. I was put in that position, not because I had done something wrong, but because the other person, the other party did something wrong, or what, what can be considered wrong. But uh, uh, And then, you know, um, I, I've, I, I, in the past 10 years, I've, I've, I've come to realize that, you know, this is all 50-50, you know. Um, you know, you, and marriages are up and down. <laughs> They're up and down. Relationships are up and down. Even with your best buddy, you know. You can tell your best buddy to go screw himself, you know, and guess what? He moves on with life and you guys high five and move on. But the problem with marriage is a lot of people, men and women, well, even men and men or women and women, they just, a lot of relationships, people just have so much ego and so much other stuff involved that they, they have a hard time just either, either turning a blind eye and just saying, you know what, let's let this go. Let's talk about this. We'll come back together. We'll be fine. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's easy, it's easy to break up. What's hard is to make up. And um, I think that's one of the important things in any relationship is that if you have kids, especially if you have kids, huh, if you, your kids hear you squabbling, your kids hear you arguing, hear you fighting, that they are able to also hear you make up and see how you do it. Because these things are going to be keys to the rest of their lives, you know. I think one of the hardest things was my son telling me that the best thing that happened, everything happened to you and mom was that you broke up. And that crushed me. That crushed me that, that he had, that he thought that, that he thinks that, you know. I think it actually, but and then, you know, when I look back, <laughs> look back at it retrospectively, I, I think it, it was good that we broke up. Uh, it was good because um, we were in that part of the marriage, sadly, where it was like, you know, she felt like she had to do what she did, you know, um, and 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 then to go through with it. I mean, not only just that. I remember, I remember she told me one time. She said, um, "I can't take you back because of what I've done. How is that going to look to everybody else? I've already said we're finished. You know, that is when your ego and your your, you know." Your great matter. All these things are not are not working right, you know. Because you know what, make a mistake. People make mistakes, you know. But learn to forgive yourself and learn to be forgiven, and learn to forgive. And a lot of people just, you know, they, they, they can't. They don't. You know. I think you know. I saw her. Well, I've seen her three times in ten years. Imagine this. I've seen my ex-wife three times in ten years. And we've probably spoken maybe, we've spoken five times. Twice on the phone, that was when her father passed away, when my father passed away. But, um, but she, she um, when I saw her the, the first time, after, it was like, what, what was before our divorce? Well, it was the divorce proceedings. And, uh, and, and I saw her and, and, you know, I walked up to her and I gave her a hug, you know, because she's the mother of my children. I don't hate her. 
My son, my son also, another thing, he, you know, my daughter, she's a psychiatry, a, psycholog a psychiatrist student, a psychology student, you know. And so she's a complete different direction on all this stuff. But Nico, my son, told me one time, he goes, Dad, how does it that you, you don't hate her? You know, how can you, you know, how can you uh, still protect her after all she's done? I said, because she's still your mother. And she's still, you know, what does it look like on me if I chose, you know, how stupid would I be that I chose this person knowing all this time so what she that she was some evil mean person because she wasn't she was a great great mother you know and and she was a great wife up until that moment up until that decision that happened you know up until that thing that happened in, her, in our life in our relationship and in, in her life and uh, after that she turned she completely turned she became like a 16 year old girl for years and she completely abandoned the, the the even the kids you know they they lost a year of school each because of because of uh how she carried on you know what she was doing you know and um yeah so it was pretty um it was sad to see it from my view because i was losing my wife losing my family and uh, and half of my family too because of her father and mother and her brothers this were all my family you know and it was sad losing all that from my point, but also it was very sad seeing someone whom you loved and respected and cared so much for to go off on this crazy uh, diversion. And and it was just, it was hard to see. It was hard to hear, you know. And then my uh, then I saw her again um, just right after that. As a matter of fact, I saw her at the beginning of... Uh, of last year yeah beginning of last year i saw her um she came to my work but she came to pick up the truck you know because she she and i had a land rover defender together and she um she took it back well she took it back because it was broken down and i had no choice i couldn't afford it you know but um this was at the beginning of all the the problems with the uh, with covid and all this kind of stuff so she came and got it she sold it broke our deal she's gonna give me half the, the value of it when she sold it she kept it whatever you know you know something i wouldn't have done to her but something she did to me, you know, so um, I guess she thinks she she thought she needed to do that. But um, but to get back to I saw her and I, I you know, I, I welcomed her with a with a cup of coffee because I know she drank coffee. I don't drink coffee. And, you know, I gave her some croissants and, you know, I was. I want to be myself and be nice. I'm not going to be a mean person to her just because of what happened. You know, we still had a life together. You know, we had a great life. Together. We had great times together. I mean, fantastic time. We did a lot of stuff together. And, um, and I love being a father and I love being her husband, you know? Um, but, um, and then I saw her again <laughs> for the, the end of, you know, right around, I got, I need one or two more times to see her. I still love to go. But I saw her again in, in divorce court, and she was completely cold and didn't even look at me. And, or she did look at me. Would, would, even my lawyer said that she had the most evil eyes, you know, looking at me because it was, you know, it was over a, we're, right now it's, it's about money, you know. And, um, but, um, yeah, it's sad to see that happen in any relationship, you know. I mean, um, I have friends of mine who've, who've broken up over, uh, it's always over some other woman or some other guy, you know. It's always stupid stuff, you know. Now, if you see them breaking up because one of them's an alcoholic and beating the other one and, and all this cruelty, all this bad stuff, yeah, that needs to stop. You know, and there's, and there's, you know, you cannot, a woman should not be with a man that beats her or abuses her in any form or fashion, anyway, either psychologically, physically, or whatever, you know. Um, and I definitely don't want that to happen to my, my daughter, and I don't want that to happen to any granddaughters I may have in the future, and I sure so don't want that to happen to my ex-wife or my mother or my sisters or this kind of stuff, you know. It shouldn't happen to any woman, you know. And, um, so, but when you see them break up because of stupidity, you know, you think, what the hell? I mean, what are you thinking? You know, you, look at what you, what's happening. You know, I have a friend of mine, she broke up with her boyfriend, really nice guy. She's a great girl, you know, and it was over another woman. She was a little bit heavier, but still looked good. But now she's like, <laughs> she's lost all this weight because she just started taking care of herself, started taking care of herself. And she's a bomb, and she's just smoking hot, you know. And this guy, of course, he's with another woman, you know. And he's, I guess he's happy with her. But he's not nearly as happy as his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> she's much happier now, you know. And it's over stupidity. So don't be stupid, people. Don't be stupid. Think about these things before you do it. And if you are doing it, don't tell them. 
tell the person you do it, just stop doing it and move on with your life like it never happened because you need to count it down as experience. Because the last thing you want to do is hurt somebody with this information, you know. You know, I'll, I'll, I, that's the last thing you want to do. So, you know, just put that aside. Move forward. Anyway, um, getting back to my relationship situation now is that it's, it's, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> you want to find somebody, and it's just not easy. It's not easy whatsoever. So, um, and it's hard meeting women over here, like I said, because of language, because of all this kind of stuff. It's just hard. It's a completely different culture. The Swiss woman, there are some beautiful women out there. Man, there are some beautiful, but there are so, you know, you know, it's just, it seems like very unhappy people. They just seem so unhappy, you know. And um, a lot of them marry, a lot of them marry um, farmers, and that's a work, but that's 24 hours a day that work is, you know. And uh, they basically become mothers, stay-at-home moms. They also they work at the farm just as hard as the guys do, their husbands do, you know. But, um, yeah, it's hard meeting. Um, and then if you do meet somebody, there is such a trail of stuff going on, you know, that that, ha that she has to still deal with. And you also, you know, all, there's always baggage. There's always something, you know. And so... You know, I think that uh, sometimes I like to meet myself, and, and I'd, I'd really like to meet myself a nice girl, and uh, and just um, just go from there, you know, and live life. And, and uh, what I really like to do is just <laughs> just disappear from this place and go somewhere in the woods, somewhere, and just live life out outdoors. And but that's not my plans. My plans are something completely different, and we'll talk about that in another video as this thing gets going. Um, I've got some serious plans coming up in the near future. Right now. I'm no longer employed because of COVID, this kind of stuff, but it's okay. And I also, I'm actually getting ready. I have to, within the next 30 days, I have to leave this apartment I'm in right now because the, me and the owner, uh, we don't see eye to eye. He, uh, first of all, he, um, he puts his nose into everything I do. I mean, uh, I'm the only guy in this building, you know, I have uh, retired folks living upstairs and nice folks, really good people. You know, I really like, I help them out as much as I can if they need help with stuff. Um, physically, you know, this kind of stuff, or bringing their groceries up or whatever, you know, I help them out as much as I can. But when you have an owner who's retired and has nothing else to do except put his nose into your business, it, it, it becomes too much. I tried to move already a year ago, but he he blocked that. He blocked that from happening. And so now I am moving now. I have no choice because now he's getting, he's kicked me out. So, um, and that's only because um, the way right now, I'm on a, what they call an RHT, which is basically the government's paying my salary right now. It's like unemployment. But they don't pay it directly to me. They pay it through um, my work. Well, that's very slow. It's always late by almost a month. So I'm a late on all my bills by a month because of that. Luckily, everybody else is pretty cool with it, but not this character. He's not cool with it. So anyway... Right now, I'm looking for another apartment. I've looked at several of them, and I just looked at one again today. It's a lot of paperwork you have to fill out, lots of things you have to do just to apply, and then they have to choose the best one. Luckily, what's going on for me right now is that there are lots of empty apartments out there right now because there's, there's a huge building growth in Switzerland. A lot of places, lots of lots of apartments have been built, even here where I'm living. Um, and although this is a nice apartment, I like it. It's just a little bit too small for me, too. I like. I need a little bit more size, so that's something else. Already, I was already looking at doing was was uh, moving out. I've been here for six years, and uh, it's time for me to move to a, a bigger place. You know, not because I'm expanding my my what I've got. As a matter of fact, what I've got now, except for a few items, is the same stuff I've had for 25 years. Um, I have a I have a table, chair, couch, a bed, um, a spare bed for my kids. I have a shelves and a TV. But everything else that fits in all, all the books, that kind of stuff, the same stuff I've had for 25 years. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say goodbye for a little while for you guys. And um, if anybody has any questions or they want to talk about something or they want me to discuss something, just shout it out and I will. You know, I don't know who's going to see this or if anybody's going to see any of this uh, or if anybody cares. And if, if, if you think that if you have a different opinion than me, please let me know because you know what? I, I don't know everything. I'm the, a matter of fact, I, I know less than anybody does, but I really am someone who likes to learn and, and I'm also someone who, who likes to help. So anyway, you guys have a good one. Adios.